Today, I am going over the 2021.40.6 update that I'm downloading right now. There are a number of improvements which adds up to a fairly busy month of updates with some good features. In the main menu, go to the software tab and press the release notes on the right side. As of this recording, about 5% of the Model 3 and Model Y owners have 2021.40.6. First, I'll start off at the top of the list. This mentions the Sentry Mode Live Camera Access, which I covered in my last video of 2021.36.8. See the link up top if you want to see more info on this topic. I'm going to skip it since it really isn't new to this release. Navigation is something that many owners have wanted to see some new features and improvements. Today we get the ability to have multiple waypoints for routing. On the navigation screen, press the navigate button and choose your last destination. In this example, I choose Harris Teeter. Once it is picked and the screen updates with the route information, you will now see a plus button on the top of the navigation bar as shown here. Press this and you will now be able to pick another address to be used as a waypoint before the final destination. For this example, I will pick Drive Shack. When the screen updates, you can see that Drive Shack is now listed above Harris Teeter. If you press the plus button again, you could do the same thing. This selection will be placed before the previous waypoint. For example, I will now pick City Barbecue. You can do this repeatedly. And with the screen updated, you can see that City Barbecue is now before Drive Shack. The way that this is now set up is you have to enter the last stop and then the stops before it as you go in reverse order, which is a little counterintuitive. This seems like an alpha version at this point. The ability to reorder the waypoints, like in Google Maps, seems like an almost necessary next step. Maybe this will arrive at some point in a future update. By the way, you can only add waypoints if the car is in park. You can't make any changes while driving the car. Next up is cold weather improvements. You can now enable the front defrost and maintain your climate settings when clearing ice and snow. Press the front defrost button twice to put it in heat mode. Press the fan button to enter the climate settings screen. As you can see, the system is now in the on position which will stay running until you shut it off. Additionally, when using climate controls on the Tesla app, automatic battery preconditioning has been optimized to consume less energy. That's great since heating is one of the highest strains on the battery pack. Tidal is a streaming music service similar to Spotify. One of its benefits is higher bitrate music found on its premium service. When you click on the Title button on the music menu, you are presented with a QR code to log in to Title. You need to set up an account with your email and a password. This page lists the three types of accounts available, free, Hi-Fi, and Hi-Fi Plus. The Hi-Fi version offers up to 1,411 kilobits per second of music, ad-free, and you can listen offline with unlimited skips. This is $9.99 a month. The Hi-Fi Plus account adds capability of up to 9,216 kilobits per second music with master quality audio, Dolby Atmos, and Sony 360 Reality Audio for $19.99 a month. For this test, I chose the free version. After that was set up, I noticed that the car was not logging into the Tidal account. 
After some research, I found out that the title account needs to be a Hi-Fi or Hi-Fi Plus account. The free account does not work. The Hi-Fi and Spotify Premium accounts are both $9.99 a month. Personally, if you already have a Spotify account and use its ecosystem, I don't think Tidal offers a whole lot more. But if sound quality is very important to you and are willing to pay for it, Tidal offers more formats and higher bit rates than Spotify. I upgraded to the Hi-Fi account and have a one-month free trial to see how I like it. This is similar to how the Spotify app works in the Tesla music menu. A premium paid version of that service is required. Once I updated the account, it automatically logs me into Tidal on the Tesla. Now you can see the menu, and on the left side are Home, My Collection, Explore, and Account. Under Home, it creates mixes for you based on your preferences, similar to Spotify. Going down the list are popular playlists and suggested new tracks. Under My Collection, your preferred artists are displayed. Under Explore, there are top playlists, genres, moods, activities and events, the charts, and podcasts. And here is a list of the genre selections. Going into Moods, Activities, and Events, here are the listings in that subcategory. And clicking on the charts gives you the hits in these areas. And here are the list of podcasts. At the top are the controls, and they are similar to other streaming apps. Heart is to save favorites, previous, play, pause, and next. Also note that the bitrate type is listed here, for example, Hi-Fi. Next up is Traffic Aware Cruise Control Chime. Go into the main control menu and tap Autopilot and scroll down the list towards the bottom. The second to last selection is for toggling the chime on or off. So when driving the car and you pull down on the shifter stock once, the car goes into traffic aware cruise control. Previously there was no audio feedback. Now there is a single chirp. Compare this to the double chirp for autopilot if you pull down the shifter stock twice. Not a huge thing, but it's nice to have confirmation for this function. The last item on the release notes is a new language support. As it says, you can now select British English as your language. One final thing that is not in the release notes is right here. There is a new upgrades tab in the main menu. You can purchase subscriptions or software upgrades directly in the car. For example, premium connectivity subscription and full self-driving monthly subscription. This is also available in the phone app. Something tells me that Tesla will be offering new upgrades in the near future. Well, that is it for today's update. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.